According to the National Center for Health Statistics, more than 100,000 people have died now from drug overdoses in the year of 2021 here in the United States, surpassing the record. That was set last year when it was nearly 94,000 people dying from drug overdoses. Again, 107,000 breaking a record. How does the crisis along our southern border actually tie into this? And it does. Border correspondent Jason Jones live in Dilly, Texas with more on uh, these really difficult numbers to report, Jason. Sean, good morning. Can you believe that we are having this discussion that in a 12-month period, 107,622 Americans died from overdoses? Really poisonings is what we should be calling it, as the cartel, specifically Cartel Jalisco, New Generation, and the Sinaloa Cartel have weaponized, and I truly mean that, weaponized fentanyl because many people are not addicted to this drug. They take it one time and they die. And that's what we're seeing play out uh, amongst families all over this country. And the worst part is our government has done nothing to shift to it. But let's talk about how what's happening at that border is directly linked to this epidemic that we're seeing in this country. What's happening on the ground is as we have watched CBP go from a national security model to a processing model, what that means is that they're taking border patrol agents off the line process people into this country. And while they do that, to the benefit of the Mexican cartels, this is where they push more and more of that deadly drug into the United States. Now, in Mexico, these labs specifically are massive. I'm talking mega super labs. Uh, the methamphetamine labs, to give you an example, under CJNG, many can produce as much as three to five tons of methamphetamine a week. I mean, we've never seen anything like that. Deadly fentanyl, millions of pills. So when you hear me say that our processes domestically do not allow us to stop this through our investigative model. We can't arrest our way out of this and we can't investigate our way out of it. And it's why you're seeing the level of failure at the national level that we're seeing. The worst part about this is directly affects the folks. So I will say this, if you wanna know what the tripwire looks like of success, it's when we start targeting these labs and the cartel specifically. That all will begin when we designate them as foreign terrorist organizations. Yeah, again, we continue to follow this story there at the border crises ongoing. Jason Jones, live in Texas. Jason, thank you. Joining us now to discuss this and more, Florida Congressman Brian Mass. Uh, welcome to the program. It is Military Appreciation Month. Congressman, thank you for your service. We do appreciate that. Yeah, I appreciate it, too. I wish I was joining you from the Sunshine State. I'm actually up here in the swamp of Washington, D.C. today. Yeah, I was going to say, I think you're in D.C. today. So uh, you and I, at least, are, are, are missing the beautiful weather down there. Um, and yeah. my goodness, it is gorgeous in your state there, sir. Uh, I want to jump into this, if I can. That report that we saw, that grim milestone, we hit uh, a couple of them here. More than a million Americans dying um, with COVID-related deaths. Then more than 100,000 dying from drug overdoses in 2021. Um, your thoughts as you reflect and the impact there on the people of Florida? Yeah, no, I'd make a tie to Ukraine and, and just warfare in general on this as you think about it. If you're thinking about Ukraine and the idea of red lines there and that you would be appalled if chemical weapons are used and killed a couple thousand people, Russia did that with chemical weapons. Think about what's going on with our border and fentanyl and drugs coming across our border like chemical weapons. Why would you be any less appalled by the fact that our government is allowing Americans to be killed by chemicals to the tune of hundreds of thousands, really doing nothing to stop it, really actually enabling this to occur by border policy? That's what the administration is doing. And we'll talk about the administration. They're also pointing blame here as we get these new inflation numbers. Inflation sitting at 8.3% in April. It was at 8.5% before, but again, still hovering at a 40-year high. But then you have President Biden uh, having what some are calling an outburst over food shortages nationwide. Watch this. We've got a long People lie on all kinds of vehicles just to get a box of food, and they're drunk. How could you forget? People were hurting. And what is it that my crowd want to do? Forget it. Forget it. God is in the United States of America. 
It seems that what's being handed out by this administration or this president is blamed. It was the Putin price hike verbiage that was used. Now it's the MAGA crowd, the ultra MAGA crowd, a new term that's floating out there. Uh, your thoughts on the president's issue with blaming the MAGA crowd for inflation? Is just lies. Every time he steps in front of a camera, says, let me be clear, or let me tell you something or anything else, he's preparing to tell you a lie. That's what he's doing about food prices and inflation and everything else. You know, let's be clear about this. There is a truck or a vehicle that gets everything to the grocery store, that gets the groceries from the store back to somebody's house. And what is the first thing that he wants to do day one policies? Make it more expensive for everything and every person to get from A to B with his energy policies. That's not a secret. They don't want U.S. energy. They don't want gasoline in your car. They, these are just things that they don't want. Makes everything more expensive to include getting your food to the store. Also, uh, baby shortage, uh, baby formula shortage that we've seen, and this is being widely reported now. I know the House GOP is holding a news conference right now. Um, Congressman, if, if you could stand by, I've got to take this live really quickly here. Uh, here's that again uh, happening now. My good friend, uh, uh, Kathy McMorris Rogers. <laughs> In Washington State, Moms, support groups, nurses have been telling me that this is the biggest crisis that they have faced as they face the, the shortage of baby formula. Families are turning to the internet because they are so desperate. It, it, it is extremely dangerous. You think about moms going to the grocery store and having an empty shelf. In some cases, they're driving for hours in order to get the baby formula that they need. And they certainly don't need to be facing empty shelves. We shouldn't be rationalized, rationing formula to keep their babies fed. And some families, they, they rely upon specific formula. I, I talked to one mom who has a baby with allergies and it's extremely difficult. She feels like she's playing Russian roulette as she goes to the store. President Biden and the FDA must do more. This is a matter of life or death. What will it take for the Biden administration to reverse its inflation, supply chain, and energy crises that are making the shortage worse? On the, on the Energy and Commerce Committee, as well as with my colleagues in the conference, we are asking the questions. We've been raising the alarm to President Biden for months. We've been seeing the empty shelves. We've been seeing the rising cost on families. We also have concerns about the Abbott recall and how it is impacting shortages. On behalf of every parent and caregiver who is here at representing parents and grandparents, I'm a mom of three kids, we will not stop unless this, until this shortage is fixed. And with that, I'm proud to introduce my colleague Patrick McHenry, a longtime leader for parents and grandparents and, and our, our families here on Capitol Hill. Well, as a parent of three young children and one that uh, we're looking for formula for, um, I'm here to tell you that uh, I know that parents are struggling in America. Uh, the Biden administration has made every aspect of family life more difficult. Go to the grocery store, you see the rising price on the shelves of every available thing, and yet you also go to the grocery store and see the lack of availability, availability of key things that you need for family life. And now we see the lack of access to baby formula. And we ask why? Well, this is not just a supply chain crisis. It's a crisis for families to be able to uh, feed their children. And it's incumbent upon parents to provide a safe environment for their children. We try to reduce stress on, in a very stressful time for our children as well. So we're asking the question to this administration, what, how are you prioritizing this? What actions are you taking to relieve the pain of families? Um, we just had Secretary Yellen testify before my committee a few minutes ago. She says, well, for the administration, it's all hands on deck for inflation. Well, we have to ask them, what are you actually doing? What does it mean? And so when it comes to baby formula, people can see this for themselves, what this administration has brought in terms of regulatory policy, and then the lack of competence in responding to firm desires within society, firm needs within society. 
And that's why we're here today to raise this question. This is not meant to be a partisan exercise, but we've come together because we don't see Democrats raising the same issue and willing to work with us to get some answer from this administration. So we're demanding answers, and that's why we're here today. We're next going to go to Stephanie Bice from Oklahoma, who's been a leader legislatively on this issue. Thank you, Elise. All, too often All right, again, you're listening there to uh, uh, House members, as you, uh, Congressman Brian Mass has been standing by, House members there talking about, Republicans rather, uh, talking about these, this baby formula shortage. Essentially, um, what is this White House going to do about it? Um, where does this stack up in terms of priority for this White House and this president? Congressman Mass, thank you so much for, for being patient and staying with us there. I know you saw Congressman Michael Waltz there as well of Florida. Um, are, do you stand with them on that, just questioning the priority or what this White House is going to do about it? We, we stand together on this, asking the White House. I'll give you two certainties of what the White House does about it, certainties. Number one, I would say in the next 24 hours, they're going to go out there and they're going to blame Republicans for uh, the, the baby food shortage. Whether there's, you know, the fact that there's no truth in that whatsoever, it won't matter. They're going to use that just as a political talking point. And then they're going to use that as a reason to say we need to uphold Roe v. Wade because there's a, ba a baby food, sh food shortage. I guarantee that's what they're going to go to. Any thought of the Defense Production Act in invoking that to possibly um, get baby formula made in a, in a quicker fashion for these, these families out there that need it? Is that a tool for the, the president? What can this White House do and what do you want to see? I'll, I'll, I'll end with that. Yeah, so it's a good question. What's possible and what's probable? What you're, what you're talking about, the, the Defense Production Act, absolutely possible. Is it probable right now? No. And you could say this with defense production. You could say it with reducing the, the federal taxes on gases or on chassis for vehicles, things that can affect the supply chain and inflation. The administration, Nancy Pelosi, Schumer, they're unwilling to move any policies like these that would actually help Americans at the grocery store or loosen up the supply chain or the bottleneck or anything else. We have these ideas. They will not move them. That makes them, unfortunately, not probable, even though they're entirely possible. That is Congressman Brian Mass of Florida joining us live. Thank you so much for your service, sir, and thank you for your patience. Good to see you, Congressman. All the best. Hey, I'm Rob Finnerty. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please join the conversation in the comments below. Don't forget to subscribe, too. Hit the bell icon to be alerted to breaking news. And remember, there's a whole lot more on Newsmax TV, America's fastest-growing cable news network. Newsmax TV, where real news for real people.